Good evening, everyone. Um, here we are again. Uh, Tanya Stewart, your host for Nicola Valley Talk. So welcome everyone again to Nicola Valley Talk, a product of Experience Nicola Valley. Um, every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific time. Tonight, I am so excited about tonight. And his name is Wes David. Welcome, Wes. Tell us about your talk show and your, and your show and you, Wes David. So Fish in the Wild West TV is um, obviously something I'm very proud of. We're going into our sixth year. and uh, But I actually... I actually kind of stumbled on it. So I was a, a professional bull rider. Uh, I, started, I grew up on a cattle ranch in central Alberta. Um, my, my family rodeoed. My uncles were Roy and Ron David, who chuck wagon race in Calgary Stampede and Cheyenne Frontier days. Um, so I grew up around rodeo. I got on my first steer when I was six or seven years old. I got on my first bull when I was 14 or 15 years old, and uh, I had a, I had an incredible career riding bulls until injuries ended my career when I was 27. However, I was smart enough to notice that my career was coming to an end when I was about 25, and I started to apprentice as a heavy-duty mechanic. Uh, incredible career uh, heavy-duty mechanic. I worked at uh, different mines and in the oil sands and even across like overseas. But at the same time, as I, I had, uh, you know, I had a son and got established in life, I was missing the thrill of competition with rodeo. But not only the thrill of competition, I was missing the camaraderie with rodeo. Like there, you cowboys, you'll never meet more friendly but competitive contestants i might be winning the bull riding somewhere but i'll go over and pull my buddy's rope and hope he wins as long as the money goes home in the same vehicle and i was missing that connection and and i always loved fishing everywhere we went out throughout my travels i'd get a fishing license and i'd fish at one point i owned 37 different fishing licenses oh. for states and through the, through canada and um so when I was missing that, I started uh, writing for outdoor magazines and I started tournament fishing, walleye tournaments. And they kind of grew together. Um, I started competing in the tournaments and I started doing well. And then uh, Mike Mitchell, actually from BC Outdoor Sport Fishing, approached me if I was interested in doing a show. And he guided me and pointed me in the right direction and helped me in every way he could. And here I am six years later with Fish in the Wild West TV. So uh, we designed it a little bit different. When I was starting Fish in the Wild West TV, I pulled about, I don't even know, thousands of anglers. And I asked them what they wanted in a show. And the number one thing that came back was they wanted no more bass fishing. The Americans have the bass fishing dialed in. They're amazing anglers. But we wanted, the people wanted this more, different species. They wanted to see more of a variety of species. And the second biggest question that come back was they wanted to know what was in their backyard. So we, um, it was originally designed for the prairie provinces. Um, and we wanted to showcase where we went, what we we're doing, wherever I go, whatever I do. The everyday angler can do. But then we also added in two trips or three trips of a lifetime. Just like every hunter dreams of going to Alaska or Africa, every angler dreams of a, a West Coast fishing trip or a fly into northern Saskatchewan. And so we we, accom we try to accommodate everybody. And we can't please everybody, but we do our best. So Wes, what an interesting um, background of yours, from bull riding to fisherman. Like, uh, that's amazing. And bull riding is one of the hardest sports and the most dangerous in, in ever, right? Like, Yeah, youth is a wonderful thing in that sport. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we all have our war wounds, right, from our youth and, and being silly. Mine is from horseback riding and, um, and motorbike riding, like dirt biking. I, I, yeah, there's two great combinations that would hurt. 
Oh, yes. I can't not tell you enough times that I've been thrown off the horse. But on to you again, Wes. Um, what makes the fishing, the Wild West TV show unique from other fishing? Just keeping it, like, I mean, we don't always show the biggest fish. We like to show the realities of fishing. Um, we have an episode that's airing this year. It's already aired once, um, but it airs throughout the year. We did it last year on the stock trout ponds. Um, and it's supposed to be, you know, I'm supposed to catch all these big fish and stuff. But we did an episode to help parents or guardians teach their kids or take them fishing. So we were standing on the on the shores of the stock trout ponds, um, showing the realities of fishing and helping to to educate, to get our, you know, to get more youth involved. Youth are the biggest thing. They're the next generations that are going to protect our, our wildlife and our fisheries, our, our waters. So that was, um, I was a little bit nervous about that episode, and it became one of my favorite episodes. Luckily, we caught fish. The kids caught fish, so it all worked out great. So leading into, um, so we're currently holding an ice fishing contest here in the Nicola Valley. Uh, selected photos will be shared on the Fishing Fishing the Wild West TV show, your show, West David's show, um, to educate your viewers on year-round fishing opportunities. So how big is the fishing industry, Wes? It is huge. Um, and to be truthful, like, uh, especially right now, ice fishing. Um, they say licenses right across Canada are up like into the like a hundred percent in some areas. Um, ice fishing it puts everybody on a level playing field. You don't you don't need a big fancy fishing boat. You don't need a lot of gear. Uh, a hand auger to drill a hole, an ice fishing rod with some line, and a jig, you know, tipped with whatever baits allowed in your area and and you're you're you can go fishing you can take your kids fishing um i just talked with with a parent about three or four days ago they never caught a single thing the whole day they were out fishing but he said they had incredible conversations with their kids you know just to be outdoors and to be doing something and they had really nothing to do but play in the snow and visit and, and kind of reconnect that is such an like a great thing. I know my son, my 15 year old would die to go on a, on a fishing trip for a week. Oh, and there's so many kids like, and, 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 and men, women, it's not just the, uh, the days of, of men baiting a lady's hook or they're long gone too. Women are, women are kicking butt out there in the outdoors, hunting, fishing and camping, everything. Um, and it's great to see. We're seeing more. One of my favorite things shooting the show throughout Canada and the northern U.S. is meeting and visiting and telling fish stories at the boat launch. Absolutely. It's one of my favorite things to do is talk fishing and people show me their, their pictures and it's, it's a real pleasure. Um, telling fish stories. Yeah, fish stories. You know the ones that grow when you come off the water and no one's around? Yeah. <laughs> or the one that got away. Or the one that got away. Or the one that everyone's always trying to catch but can never. That elusive big fish, eh? The make Yeah, I have an incredible editor, so I can show my <laughs> fish. <laughs> um, um, Greg Gerard is saying loves the background. I'm, I'm assuming he's saying your fish back there. Oh, I hope so. They're all replicas. <laughs> They're yeah. all replicas. They're all plastic mounts. I put the real one back. Okay. Um, Arctic grayling, walleye chasing a perch. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I'm going to eat it, it looks like. And, hey, so no fish got hurt in this production. <laughs> all fish were released. Awesome. <laughs> okay, so, um, Wes, so based on what you have witnessed in Western Canada and the U.S., a, why should the Nicola Valley work in growing its fishing tourism sector? Well, step outside your door and just have a look. What a beautiful, 
beautiful, beautiful area. And um, you, when I first got talking with Merida and Nicola Valley, they at the fish a day for as long or a lake a day for as long as you can stay. Well, I'm willing to give that a try. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> and, and I do know that you are coming up here, right? Yeah, we will be there in May, towards the end of May. I forget the exact dates. Um, mm -hmm. It's penciled on our calendar. I have it there since, uh, I believe, in November. Um, mm -hmm. My cameraman, editor, co-producer, he absolutely loves BC. And when I told him we we're going there, I thought he was going to jump through the phone to hug me. He was so excited to come there. I believe we're going to try to fish just three or four lakes um, when we come there. Uh, hopefully we can do some other things, maybe visit a couple schools. Um, I've heard incredible, incredible things about um, the community and, and we're excited to, to come and promote and our shows air, airs through a variety of networks in Canada and the U S and we want them to come and see your beautiful surroundings. And, and there's something for everyone there. You don't have to be a fisherman. You can do whatever you want. Yes, we can. I mean, I mean, I go hiking, I can leave my house and within two minutes I'm up in the hills. Right. Yeah, and, and the wildlife, and you have an incredible rodeo there, I believe, in September. I fine. Ah, uh, we did couldn't have it this year because of or last year because of COVID, but I sure missed it. I mean, I grew up going to it, and uh, yeah. Did you ever come here? I went there four years in a row, and three out of four I landed on my head, but I still like it. <laughs> <Not> <laughs> 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 Three out of four, but I still like Merritt. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you landed on your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my! So, um, Wes, <laughs> that's um horrible. <laughs> I'm over it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, Wes, you spend 125 days on the water each year fishing. Wow, great job. Um, videoing, taking photos, and researching. And this coming summer, you're scheduled to come on to the Nicola Valley to film an episode. And I think we touched base on this, but I'm just reading my question. <laughs> um, and, and the head head thing, eh? Um, kind of set me for a loop, huh? falling on your head from the bowl. Fishing on our lakes and exploring our community. So can you tell tell our viewers and, and everyone else, like, what's that going to entail? Well, Back to the 125 days on the water. Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh, I would love to fish 125 days a year. But last year, 81 of those days were in the rain. <laughs> so it's not as romantic as it sounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I spend a lot of time on the water. Uh, magazine assignments. I, I do a lot of work with Hook Magazine. Uh, doing the episodes, shooting the shows, and different sponsor obligations, and um, you know conservation stuff. So to come there, uh, I believe we're coming for rainbow trout, maybe some bull trout, a couple of different. We haven't dialed that in just yet because it's all going to depend on weather and stuff. Because the time we come there, um, but. Coming to Merritt, if we have to, if it's one of those episodes that if we have to stay two or three extra days to get what we need, we will do so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are, are in the rain or the snow or, the, or, hey, what about the bugs? Didn't you mention the bugs? Like a lot of times, aren't you batting off those those little uh, black flies and stuff like that? that are uh, yeah, but it, what's best is when a mosquito's chewing on you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking to the camera and you got to keep a straight face. Oh, oh, it, but it's been 38 below here for the last nine or 10 days. Right yeah. now, Tanya, I'd pay $100 for a mosquito bite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my. Eh? And see here, what did we get? Like minus 20. What did we get? Minus 26? 27. 27. And it was like, I wouldn't even leave the home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't even like answering the door when it's that cold. No kidding. Well, wow, eh? 
But anyways, back to your fishing 125 times or 81 days, um, and most of it in the rain, it's not as glamorous. And uh, what happens when you don't catch anything? Um, well, luckily, we haven't, we haven't ran into that yeah. yet. Knock on wood. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, but we understand like fishing is fishing. It, it's actually, even though it's a fishing show, it's actually a reality show. So we, you know, we, we've had to stay longer, uh, to make it work. We've done shows as quick as six hours. I think it was our quickest show we've ever did was, was six hours, but we've also been to an amazing fly in lodge in Northern Saskatchewan where it rained for seven days so hard that Chuck, my camera would not take the camera out of the bag. Oh, really? He said, I don't care what you catch, what you do. It, I'm not taking the cameras out. So yeah. there's those challenges. It's not only fishing. Usually if we can find the fish, we can make them bite. Oh, okay. But there's, there's weather issues. There's, there's different frustrations that I don't know is happening. Mm -hmm. Chuck does because, you know, say I'm, fighting a great fish or doing a great talk with a fish but the boat turns and now the the sun is in right into his lens okay. so these are things you don't know that's happening and you can turn the boat and redo it but the first priority is the fish if he's been out of the water too long then he goes back and we don't get that shot mm -hmm. okay um so you don't have no prop fish <laughs> no prop fish, no. no I can't problem. take these down and bring them with me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's kind of funny. So somebody there's, there's a lot of there is a lot of challenges that even I didn't know um, yeah. until you get doing it. And of course, our rookie year is the biggest learning curve. Um, and a lot of the American shows where they have seven, eight months to get fifteen episodes. Here in Canada, we have four months mm -hmm. to get all our episodes. Um, so there's there's a lot more challenge. In the summer months, I spend more time with my cameraman, with my co-producer, than I do with my wife. Oh. Like we're, we're on the road, and there's a lot of pressure. And, and we put a lot of pressure on ourselves as well. Yeah. Well, I think that comes with, with something that you're passionate about, right? Um, you're always like, striving for that better, for, for it to be better and, and for it to come across um, more g better, genuine, whatever, in that aspect, if you're that passionate. If, and if it was easy, everyone would be doing it, right? Right, 100%. And there's, <laughs> you'd be surprised at how much office work there is to an outdoor show. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. I kind of grin, but like people, when I meet people, boat launch talk, oh, I wish I could fish for a living like you do. Yeah. No, yeah. you only see me for a half an hour fishing. You don't see everything else that goes into it. Well, that's the editing too, right? Your editing is, is a huge thing um, to edit, right? And it's meticulous. Yeah. And we have other projects going on. Like, yeah. like I own the production company. So we have other projects going on. We do a lot of commercials and, and different um just different projects i own a lot of stuff i don't even know how to turn on wow eh? but chuck does <laughs> chuck i like that <laughs> chuck i hope you get to meet chuck when you come here um, <laughs> oh yeah you'll get to meet chuck yeah and yeah uh, he's the brains behind the whole operation <laughs> well since you fell on your head four times here in maryland that's exactly <laughs> right in your town yeah. Hey, maybe you can get some back when you're back here. But <laughs> <laughs> so this Alan Thompson is asking, what species are you targeting? I guess when you're coming here, that's what I'm assuming. Again, that, that will go back to the time of year. And we haven't we don't have that dialed in yet. I guarantee a rainbow trout is mm -hmm. is on. Um I would love to do an episode or at least a segment just on bull trout. Oh. Um, I, I would love to that and and combine them. We we don't have to do a, a whole episode on rainbow trout. Again, we're I think we're going to three or four lakes. Now maybe those three or four lakes have some you know three or four different species in them. We can do a segment on each species and really show what Nicola Valley is about. Or and that's just four lakes. Imagine if you stayed and fished a lake a day for as long as you stay. Like who know it's. It's incredible, wow. and 
whatever we go for, I'm excited. It's I'm really, really excited just to be, just to be in the area. To Greg has told us so much about the community, and and I wanna, I wanna experience that. It is a beautiful community. Um, and my girlfriend Melvina White. Um, I don't know if you know her, but you're you're definitely gonna meet her. She um told me that there's 23 species of fish in the Nicola Lake. I think about that. About 23. So 20 so I guess we'll be there for at least 23 days. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where the bull trout is. It's in <laughs> Nicola Lake. Yeah. There you go. That'll be nice. You can stay here for quite a while. Get a cabin. So, and Melvin said there, there's over 200 lakes in the area. Yes. Yes. So that gives us time to fish two, two of some of those lakes twice. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so you have seen a lot of innovation in your travels, right, Wes? And based on your experience, how important are local initiatives like this talk show and our experience Nicola Valley program with the blogs and promoting small town tourism to the world. I, I can't even put a number on that. It's crazy important. Um, there, it's over a hundred million dollars brought into Canada alone, just through hunting and fishing. That's people coming in from either province to province or from the U S you know, they're, they're buying groceries at the grocery store. They're filling up at the gas station. They're staying in the hotels, uh, restaurants. Like, it's it's endless. Fishing licenses. And so much of our money from fishing licenses goes back into conservation. So just to bring the awareness of, like, what you're doing with the, the lake a day for as long as you stay to, you know, it's a, I can't even tell you how important that is. And it's not just the fishing. It's the community itself. There's never been such a focus put on small business as it is right now. And I always say, and nothing against anything, but when I go watch youth hockey games or baseball games or anything like that, I've never seen Amazon on the jerseys. It's a small restaurant. It's the gas station. It's the it's the butcher shop. They're all supporting our kids, our families, and we need to support them. And uh, quickly, um, what northern um, um, town in Saskatchewan did, were you flown into? So we were in Mississippi, Saskatchewan, with okay. Adventure Destination International. Uh, okay. We work really closely with Adventure Adventure Destination International. They have. Um, but I think it's 15 different self-guided outpost camps where they fly you in, you bring your own food. We well, got the biggest refrigerator right outside the door and yeah. you, they have beautiful, warm, dry cabins there and you, you're you on your own. And man, you solve a lot of the world's problems out there. So before we let you go, is there anything that you want to add or that we may have or I may not have asked or, or, or something you have thought? Um, one, watch the show, Fish and Wild West TV. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, every chance you get, take not only a youth fishing, but someone who's never fished before. It's it's fishing is relaxing, it's it's good for your body, it's good for your mental health. And the biggest thing is is getting youth involved in fishing and the outdoors, because they're the ones that are going to take care of it once we're gone. So I think that's the biggest importance. Even if you take a kid fishing for an hour, just get them introduced to it and, and into the outdoors in general. And being outside and stuff like that, always leave with what you came. Do not leave a footprint print behind, right? Correct. Leave it better than when, how you found it. Exactly. And uh, so with that, I would like to thank you, Wes David, for being on our show. Well, thank you very much, Wes. And I want to thank everyone for tuning in. And again, next week, uh, same time, same place. Uh, remember, reuse, rethink, reduce, and, and uh, reuse, I think, if I didn't say that already. But uh, again, thank you, Wes. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you.